Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about validations in Blazor app. Uh, I'm going to talk about how you can use edit forms for taking input from the user and how you can validate that input before you submit to your application. I'm going to use the same demo application that I've been using for my video series. And the only difference is I've added email address to author and salary so that I can use these fields for validation. And I have just put these authors in the stable form. Uh, in the stable view in HTML. Okay, uh, so to take input from the user, what you need to do is you need to use edit forms, um, uh, edit forms from, from the razor components. This is not an HTML tag, it's an ASP.NET Core component, and this is used to take input from the user. So I'm going to do this, I'm going to take input and say type, uh, type text. Cool, let's run this and see what happens. So when I run it, you can see that you're getting an exception here. It says edit form requires a model parameter. That means that we need to bind this edit form to a model. And then we need to we need to bind the properties of the model to the control. And then that's how we can check if the model is valid before we submit it, right? So um, I already have a model, which is author model. And that's how I'm going to, I'm going to take, um, take the input from the user. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna get uh, I'm gonna go down here and create a property of author author and I'm gonna name it as author and do not forget it to initialize your model before you bind it to your edit form because it'll throw the same error again. So I'm gonna initialize my model here and then let's copy this and then say that model um at the rate author sweet let's run this and see if this works see cool now it's working now what i've done here is uh, i did not want to type all this html in front of you so I'm, i already wrote it and i'm gonna put this html in this edit, edit form here um uh, i want you to notice a couple of things here though um, it's not all HTML. I'm using some of the razor components here. You can see that I'm using input text, which is an H, uh, which is an ASP.NET Core component. And the reason why I'm using this component is because I wanted to bind my uh, model property to this component to this control, and that's why I'm using this component. And there are some there are other components too that you can uh, check out. There is input text text area, which gets rendered into text area, then input date into you know, type date, there is checkbox, there are other uh, kinds of input components that you can check out too. Okay, so now that I have edit form and now that I have all my controls bound to my um, properties, I want to call a function when the model, when the model is, uh, model is valid so i already have a button here a save button and i have a clear button so when i click on save i want to call a function but i only want to call that function when my model is valid i do not want to call that function uh when uh, my model is invalid and i'm going to call save author here i we do not have this function let's go ahead and create that function here i'm going to say this is a private private function and it's a save author and on this function what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna use author service author service small author and save the author which is bound uh which is bound to our our form here our edit form here and once it's saved then i want to assign a new instance to my author cool Let's run this and see how it looks like. Nice. I have first name, last name, city, email address, and salary. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna enter John Smith as my new um, uh, Boston new uh, author, John Smith. And I'm gonna add G email address and say Salis. The, oh, $1,000 when I save it, you can see it gets added in my list here because it's 
my author service is um, adding into authors and it gets populated on my on my table view here but if I and you can see the form got cleared so if I click on save again you can see that it enters empty values in my table too and that's when I want to validate uh, this input uh, before I submit it to my table view or in my database so how do we do that to do that what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to author model here and I'm gonna say that this is a required field this is a required field and it comes from um, uh, this required field comes from a component data annotation you so make sure that you add this namespace here and uh, now that I have made my my one of the properties of my model as required field another thing that I need to do is I need to go on my edit form here and I want to tell my edit form that make sure that you do data annotation validator data annotation validator uh, we should validate the form before you submit it let's run this and see how it looks like so when I click on save you can see that it does not add any value to my table and you can see that it highlights the text box too when I click on save it highlights the text box saying that this field is required so enter something before you save uh, before you save it in, uh, to your database okay so but what if we want to show a message on top of the form so how do we do that to do that what I'm gonna do is I want to show a custom message um, and um, the custom message error message is uh, first name is required first name is required and uh, and to show this message on um, on our form what we need to do is we need to say validation summary add validation summary component here and this tag should list on all the errors associated to those forms so let's run this and see how it looks like and I'm gonna go ahead and click on save and then you can see on top it's saying that name is required that means this property is required you cannot submit you need to uh, make your model valid before you submit it to submit it to your database cool let's go ahead and add some more um, uh, some more validations here what I'm gonna do here I'm gonna say just like first name last name is also required last name is also required and there are some built-in attributes that you can use um, uh, use for other properties so what I want to do is I do not want city name to be longer than 20 characters and you can find these built-in attributes here you can uh, you can compare your uh, you can validate your controls through credit card and you can check phone email address you can check the string length this is what I'm gonna use for my city so what I'm gonna do is um, I'm gonna say that the string length should be 20 less than 20 characters um, it's not then show this message and the message is city um, city name cannot be uh, longer than 20 characters nice um, and if you do not want to validate your email address you want .NET to do the validation what in, then what you can do is you can say that this is a data type and data type of data type of email email address and if it's not email address then we would like to throw an error saying saying that please enter valid email address cool and what i want to do is i want to another uh, built-in attribute that i want to use is i want to uh, i want to check salary before if someone saves salary less than thousand dollars then it should not save in the system so to do that, what I'm going to say this the range should be greater than thousand dollars, and I'm going to put maximum number as anything more than, than anything, you know, and uh, and the error message should say that um, salary sh 
with B um, should be greater greater than thousand dollars. Sweet. Let's run this and see how it looks like. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this and click on save. You can see that uh, it's showing the first name is la first name and last name is required and the salaries by default we're using input number as one of the controls here that's why it's showing zero and then it says salary should be greater than zero and city and email address are not required field that's why you're not seeing any error but if you put an invalid city if you let's say if you put in city longer than 20 characters and try to save it then you'll see that error city, city uh, name cannot be longer than 20 characters and if you have e invalid email address then you can uh, see that error too saying that please enter valid email address cool so but if i want to see these errors right next to my control so that it gets easier for the user to see these errors so what i'm gonna do here is um this is pretty easy i'm gonna go and see that validation message and this validation message is for um is for one of the properties of my model and that property is that property is our uh, first name and i'm gonna add some space here so that it looks nicer I'm seeing in the space and uh, let's go ahead and add um, this validation message for other controls too and we are not going to need this uh, validation summary and i'm going to copy this and paste it here paste it here paste here All right. and uh, then let's change the control uh, property names here so that it gets associated with that control and paste it here um, copy and paste it here nice and i think we need to do it for salary too and i'm gonna copy this paste it here. nice let's run this and see how it looks like when i click on save you can see the errors if you enter invalid city then you can see that error too invalid email address then you can see the invalid email mess error here too and uh, if you uh, add valid uh, information then the error starts going away i think that's pretty cool um if you start uh, typing valid information then the error starts going away and then uh, he makes hundred thousand dollars and let's click on save and that's how we can save into your in your table or in your database so yeah that's all about validations guys uh, uh, next I'm going to talk about JavaScript interrupt so stay tuned thanks for watching the video and if you have any questions put it in the comment section and don't forget to subscribe this is Fahad thanks for watching the video bye